So you have a brother that talked to a, uh, one of the folks, let me say that much. He was a firefighter and he told him about his time while being a firefighter and it shocked this brother and shook him to the core. Let's roll that. He said, there are way too many things that I wish I could forget. And I said, yeah, man, you make it to damn near a hundred years old. I'm pretty sure you got a handful of regrets. And he looked at me with the most serious look ever and said, you have no idea. Well, now I'm curious, do tell. He said, you know, I used to be a firefighter through the 60s and 70s. I said, that's what's up. That's a very commendable job. And he said, yeah, it should be. He said the 60s and 70s was a different time in every way possible. You know that, right? And I'm just like, yeah, no shit. He said, back in those times, I was a way different man. And who knew that we'd get to the point where we are in society today and I'd be feeling the way I'm feeling about the decisions that I made back in those times. So right before he took a very long pause, he looked at me and said, back in those times, it was very common for firefighters that look like me to leave people that look like you and burning houses and buildings and horrible situations just to say they couldn't get to us. He said more times than he'd like to admit, he would hear screaming black people and children in burning buildings and houses and apartments and stores and cars. And he would literally just pretend he didn't hear it. He said his last time doing it was when he made eye contact with the baby that he deliberately went into a building to save and deliberately didn't. And he said that was the last time he did it and he quit that, that year. He said the nightmare still hasn't stopped. He still hasn't forgiven himself and therapy helps, but it's still a living nightmare to have those memories. You know, it's a lot of them that's done a lot of things like this to black people. There's a lot of bodies buried in places that we don't even know that they know. And a lot of times when they get older like that, you even have people, you know, that, that talked about this on TikTok when they get in hospice care, they just start confessing to where all the bodies is at. They confess or how they lied on a black person, got them strung up or, you know, how this guy is confessing that he literally left black people to perish when he could have saved them. That guy got to deal with that definitely in the next life for sure. He going to have to uh, uh, answer and give an account for those people because basically he was participating in murdering black people. It's just that simple. And he said times are different back then. Yeah, it was. That's why our brothers and sisters fought. That's why our brothers and sisters died. And you know, a lot of times y'all talk about the police and how racist some of the police are. Well, it's just not the police. The firefighters, same people, the paramedics. Any, look, I told y'all, anything that the white supremacists control, there's racism in it. Period. Pick it. You can pick whatever you want to pick. Banking is racism there. Healthcare, racism there. Entertainment, racism there. Business, racism there. Education, racism there. Pick one. You're going to find it. But, but it's not education is the problem. It's not uh, 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 business is the problem. It's not policing is the problem or firefighter or paramedics or any kind of healthcare is the problem. White supremacy is the problem. And anti-black racism is the culture of white supremacy. That's why to me it's dangerous to have them controlling so much and not having enough oversight or stiff penalties to the point where it won't be incentivized and it won't be tolerated. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just a history and it's a culture. When people feel the same way about black people, they felt in 1723 and 1823, just like in 2023, it's a culture at that point. It's not a one-off. It's not that guy, this person's generation. No, it's a culture. It's taught in the households. That's the only way people would be that way. No child coming to the earth having anti-black racism, not a one but as something that's taught, that's nurtured in the homes, and that is a culture at that point. So yeah, this guy here that, that confessed, he confessed, but you know, my attitude about that was, shoot, man, man, you burn in the eternal lake of fire and brimstone for that. You know those people needed help and you just turned away 
and, and allow them to, I mean, could you imagine that black person seeing this guy right there that can help you? And he just, he just walk away and say, oh no, nobody in there. May he burn in hell. 